Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Vogt, joined by Derek Young as we get ready to preview K-State in Providence, a little basketball action. Uh, normally, these tournaments going on during Thanksgiving, Cats get a little bit of a jump start on everybody. They are playing the weekend before Thanksgiving, and they get it all started on Friday night in the Bahamas, 5 o'clock against Providence, CBS Sports Network, for anybody wondering where you can catch the game. Uh, coincidentally, K-State probably has a little bit of information on this Providence team that they can take from last year in the NCAA tournament because both teams were in Greensboro and had Providence pulled off the upset in the first round, they would have played K-State because Providence was a sacrificial lamb to Kentucky in the first round. So maybe some more familiarity uh, with the Friars than what K-State would have originally had. And some of that translates over. Providence has a, a decent contingent of guys that returned from last year's team. Most notably, Bryce Hopkins, who transferred from Kentucky to Providence last season and uh, averaged almost 16 a game last year, was over eight rebounds, so he's a great player as well. And their current leading scorer this season is Devin Carter, who also transferred to Providence last year but stuck around after Ed Cooley left for the Georgetown job. Uh, so Devin Carter's averaging almost 16 a game this season. Uh, historically, has not shot it well from three in his career, but has done so to start this season. And then the uh, new head coach of the Friars this year is Kim English, who most people will remember as a player at Missouri. So that's kind of to get you up to speed on Providence. As for K-State, everybody knows the story on them. Battled a little bit with USC, given the circumstances. I thought played better in that game than I thought may be possible at times. They came home. They took care of business against uh, to, you know, whatever type opponents in Bellarmine and South Dakota State. Honestly, the South Dakota State game, probably their most impressive performance of the year, considering Summit League preseason champs and a team that's been in the NCAA tournament consistently has some real life to them, and K-State pretty much handled them uh, in their entirety on Monday. So uh, we'll just start with the K-State aspect here, D.Y. I mean, how is K-State playing right now, and what should expectations look like as they head down uh, for this game against Providence? Well, I didn't think they played very good against Bellarmine, and, and I was kind of concerned exiting the arena after that game, exiting Brandon Lynch Coliseum. And then when I'm exiting Brandon Lynch Coliseum after the South Dakota State game, I'm pretty encouraged because you still think at some point Arthur Kalum is going to figure it out and be that prolific scorer and player that you expected him to be. Tyler Perry's already rounding into form, and he's exactly what we thought he would be. Naquan Tomlin will be back. And I think you got a four stud at this point. I, I know some people have been hesitant to jump on the Cam Carter bandwagon. I think it's time to jump on the Cam Carter bandwagon. Wow. Uh, I don't know that I'm there yet. He's been really good this year. Uh, I, look, I, I had some preconceived notions about Cam Carter. You're right. He's been, he has been good this season. He is somebody that right K-State can rely on, I think, at this point, or at least getting there. And I, I'm very impressed with what I've seen from him so far this year. So uh, I give I give credit to Cam Carter. I, I joke about how I, I kind of treat him there, and uh, it will be interesting to to kind of see what he does against elevated competition, which is what K State's going to get here. And you know, talking about Cam Carter and how he's played to start this season, obviously there's been an uptick, I think, in his consistency in shooting the three. That was one of the big things that. I, I didn't like about Cam Carter is that you would look at the numbers and go, oh man, okay, he's not as bad of a three-point shooter as you think, but it was just so up and down. But through the first three games of the season, Cam Carter is shooting over 40% from three. He was two of seven against Bellarmine, but he was four of eight against South Dakota State. He was four of nine against USC. He had 25 against South Dakota State. I, I am with you, and the finishing looks better too. Like, this seems like a legitimate version of Cam Carter that we're getting right now, and now we get to see it again against power competition in Providence. Yeah, I just think he's going to be one of the most improved players in the Big 12, if not the most improved player in the Big 12, because he's also an outstanding defensive player. Not single-handedly, but he took a lot of the responsibility in terms of defending Zeke Mayo, who might play in the NBA. Yeah, no, I... I think it's going to be interesting to watch how he kind of continues and goes through this. All right, other notes about K-State heading into this game. I mean, David Gasson is another guy that returned from last year. There was some buzz from this coaching staff going into it and everything else. 
Uh, what do you make of the version of David Gasson that we've gotten so far this season? I think he's still trying to get comfortable in his new role. I think that's what it is. He hasn't been terrible, but he's still a work in progress for what they're asking of him, which is a little bit different than what they asked of him last year. If I, if you want me to pick out a plus, it's that he's been much more of a rebounder this year than I imagined. I think, you know, there, there are still the frustrating moments with David Gasson. I've actually been pretty impressed by the, I don't know what necessarily to call it, but he's at least been a little bit more aggressive. He hasn't played as soft. I think that was a legitimate problem that he had at points last year. Like you could just straight up call him a soft player at points. He's not been that this year. He's still trying to get comfortable, like you said. And fortunately, you have a little bit of wiggle room in that scenario if you're K-State because of how good the guards have played right now. So, And, and, he's, and he showed me a little something different, too, with that behind-the-back pass. Yeah, that's well, he's wearing the number one this year. So he somebody's got to fill Marquise Noel's shoes. And apparently David Gasson has taken it upon himself to be that guy that does so. Uh, looking at what K-State is going to maybe try to do against Providence, what is what is the one thing that you feel confident that K-State can kind of dictate and go into a game planning on executing uh, against teams that, like Providence, have some serious talent and were an NCAA tournament team a season ago? It's a good question. I think probably finding your shots – like I said, it's still a little bit of a work in progress on the offensive end in terms of flow, movement, and things of that nature because you're transitioning to a whole different system that no, nobody on this roster really ran last year. But even with that being said, it feels like they've got the shots that they've wanted through three games. If that continues, I agree with Jerome Tang. I think this team can really shoot it. I think they have a lot of shooters on the floor. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's one of the things that I, I like to see is that not only is it that they brought some guys in that can kind of shoot it, but oh, geez, guys wow. that were here last year are shooting it well and, and have shown an improved level, maybe outside of David Gasson, who they said that they wanted to shoot the ball more. Well, he's going to have to take him. He needs to be. He needs to get get a little bit closer to the rim at least. But for this to offense to work as it is intended, he is going to have to take those and make those. Yeah. All right. Well. In this specific game and everything that's going to go down in the Bahamas, mention the guys that returned for Providence from a season ago. Look, I was impressed by what Providence did earlier this week, winning on Tuesday night against Wisconsin. That was a game that Providence dominated from the get-go. I mean, it was 37-21 at halftime, so the 13 points uh, that the final score ends up being different on that's a little bit misleading on how things went down. Like Providence just owned that game. Um, they were up by 20 plus at various points. They, they were never in threat of losing this. This team is better than what I thought they would be. And I know they were an NCAA tournament team last year, but I thought losing Ed Cooley, there might be a little bit of a drop off. K state's got a legitimate threat in front of them with the Friars, uh, on Friday night. I would agree with that. And I'll be honest. They got a couple other good players. You mentioned Devin Carter. Pierre's not bad, but, I mean, they are really carried by what Bryce Hopkins can do. He might be one of the 10 or 15 best players in college basketball. Well, and it'll be interesting to see how K-State kind of handles uh, that inside. Because here's the one thing on Providence, on, on how they'll roll out there. They aren't necessarily the, the absolute biggest team in that K-State will face. And I know last year that was a significant problem they had is that they struggle against bigger teams because they could kind of out-physical them. Um, there are only two players on the, the Providence roster that are bigger than 6'9", and I would say despite some of the frustrations at points this year, I've been surprised and impressed by K-State's big men at points. I mean, Will McNair has done things offensively. He's a little slow and has gotten him in trouble defensively at times. Um, David Gasson, same type of way, but K-State's had some guys battle there. This, I think, is going to be a really good matchup. It's just going to come down to how can those guys on the inside handle a dude like Bryce Hopkins, who is a little bit more skilled and he's not, you know, an oversized guy down there. Well, I think it could be Arthur Kaluma, to be honest. They guards him. And you're kind of waiting on a game for Arthur Kaluma to to bunt, bunch out. Like this has been a little bit of a, a tough start for him. A lot of volume, not a lot of shots falling, then did not play against South Dakota State 
for you know what whatever the reason may end up being was a little dinged up there and everything else. This is an opportunity for him in a matchup that K State needs him to come through because obviously you need your guards to make shots like they have been, but you do need to take advantage of this and and have a guy that can go out there and handle Bryce Hopkins. So I think you're right. This is a good uh, matchup for Arthur Kaluma to at least try and prove himself, and I. I think that's a, a good thing to mention and bring up here for K-State. And we'll see how that goes because obviously he didn't play in the last game. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how it works and goes. And also some of these tournaments, it's about which team is able to adjust quicker. Weird environment. They're playing it in a ballroom down there in the Bahamas. You had to make the long trip there. K-State at least at least gets the benefit of being there an extra day than Providence. Yep. And and I, I like what you mentioned earlier. You basically got a scout on Providence last year because you were in Greensboro and we're going to potentially play them. So you're not going, you didn't necessarily scout what they do because this is a different coaching staff, mm -hmm. but you at least probably know the, the, the bad things and the good things from an individual standpoint, when it comes to the tendencies of those returning players, Providence doesn't have a, that same advantage because it wasn't Kim English at Providence last year that was scouting Kansas state. Yep. And on the inverse of this, uh, and, and again, it doesn't really matter because it's a new staff, but like those Providence guys, they didn't see a lick of K-State last year because they played beforehand. They lost. They were done. So it's like, you know, there's no point to watching K-State and worrying about them. So there is a little bit of an inherent advantage here for a couple of reasons for K-State. Uh, overall, down in the Bahamas, there's a look at the field. The first game in this tournament will get played at 2.30 between Miami and Georgia. So Nigel Pack going beforehand. Uh, you got to see a little bit of Georgia already this year down in Vegas because they played Oregon uh, in the same event that K-State played USC in. Uh, what do you anticipate from this tournament overall down in the Bahamas that K-State's playing in? Uh, I think K-State province will be pretty even. Georgia, Miami should take care of the Bulldogs, at least from what I saw. Georgia has some talent, um, but M Mike White is known as a recruiter and has done that in Athens. But the problem at least from what I saw, maybe a small sample size. It just kind of seemed like you, you roll the ball out. Yeah. Georgia kind of the roll the ball out there kind of team and, and hope something good happens and not necessarily elite, excuse me, elite in-game coaching. So we'll see how that works. Miami, the far more talented team. And I think they have a coaching mismatch when it comes to in-game stuff because I have a lot of respect for Jim Laranega. Uh, they return a lot of guys from last year's Final Four team as well. So you would think the Hurricanes can get past the Bulldogs, but K-State Providence seems like more of a 50-50 clash to me. You told me the Kim Palm numbers are also pretty similar. Yeah, I I'm kind of, yeah, Kim Palm says this is a one point win for K-State, very evenly matched for these teams. So there's you know not much to necessarily glean from that. But I I kind of side with you know what your expectations are here. Miami should go down, take care of their business against a team that they should be better than in Georgia and then K state Providence back and forth. Be I, or, or, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility that K state loses both of these games down in the Bahamas. I think you want one though. I think the goal yeah. is to get one. I mean, their goal is probably to get both, but for me internally, um, I'm thinking ahead of time. I'm content with at least one win. Um, that's, that's the way I kind of see it. Anything beyond that is probably a bonus. Yeah, I know. Um, we're on the basketball pod, so I'll say this. And another interesting thing: are, are we sure? I mean, Mike Boynton might be in trouble after this year. Oklahoma State lost again tonight. <laughs> uh, they lost, cool. they lost the Saint Bonaventure. That's uh, that's a that's a tough that's a tough one to bust out uh, right there. You know how I feel about Mike Boynton. Uh, nice guy, not a great basketball coach. Uh, and they were up pretty big early in that game. Uh, look, here's what I say about K-State in this situation and what they're going to, to face down here. I think they do beat Providence. Uh, early in the season, I, I would have felt different like beforehand. But I, I've seen a lot that I've actually liked and been surprised by in a good way from this K-State team that I just didn't expect. I got pretty down on K-State before the season tipped off. Um, I've been impressed. I think that they can beat Providence and then – you know, you'll see what happens against Miami. Obviously, they are a superior team to you right now. K State's missing one of their key cogs in Naquan Tomlin and everything else. But if you beat Providence and then you can go down and just kind of compete with Miami, uh, I think that's a pretty good showing in the Bahamas for K State. You just can't lose both games down there. 
and uh, you know, kind of tank the the feeling of everything. But I do think K State can beat Providence. I think it is probably a close game. I don't think this gets one sided one way or the other. K State just has to come through and make shots on their end. If they don't make shots, maybe it gets a little gruesome because I don't know that you you trust a lot of offense to come from the inside if it doesn't come from being set up by successful outside shooting by K-State. Yeah, I, I think the Cats shoot well enough. I think being there ahead of time is probably an advantage. Um, I, I think they can, you know, you take away Hopkins and you probably feel good. You want to make someone else beat, beat you. Um, so it'll be interesting how it unfolds. But, I, yeah, I think Cats by four, four to six points. It's probably not a, not a bad number. Uh, real quick, Naquan Tomlin was brought up. He's going to go to diversion with his case that stemmed out of Aggieville. Do you have any news, notes, or thoughts on the Naquan Tomlin situation as it currently stands? Uh, I would just say, yeah, delicate matter here, so I'm always a little bit careful with the language, but I, I, I'm i confident. I don't know when, but I'm confident that Naquan Tomlin's going to be back. Yeah, I feel like the way that this thing is trending, my thought on it was that he would be back before people kind of anticipated and, and thought that it might happen. So that's kind of my where I still stand on this. I think that uh, Naquan Tomlin gets seen, you know, in a reasonable time. Obviously, it's not going to be down here. I, I think people are aware of that, but I just uh, want to make sure that there aren't some people that are thinking like, hey, you know, maybe we see Naquan Tomlin. No, there will be no Naquan Tomlin in this game uh, in, in the Bahamas, but it is something to think about. Uh, and and moving forward, I think he is probably going to be you know getting pretty close to to being ready to go for K State. So um, I'm I'm excited to see that, especially now adding it into what I think has been a team playing better, and uh, they obviously have a chance to prove themselves against Providence on Friday night in the Bahamas, five o'clock CBS Sports Network. Cats and Friars, uh, K State trying to get to three and one on the season and set up what would likely be a matchup with former Wildcat Nigel Pack, even though absolutely nobody on this current staff has a tie to Nigel Pack. But it will still be fun for K-State fans to see the Wildcats try and challenge Nigel Pack. So that will do it for Derek Young. I'm Mason Voth. If you enjoy any of this stuff that you heard right here on the K-State Online YouTube, make sure that you are also over at K-State Online on On3 and get all of your K-State football and basketball info. It's a big football weekend as well with the Sunflower Showdown. We'll have plenty of coverage here on the YouTube and the website throughout the weekend covering that and then immediate thoughts from K-State and Providence tonight and K-State, Miami, or Georgia, whoever they end up facing on Sunday. Thank you for watching K-State Online.